Good morning and welcome to Herb Oracle Podcast, botanical divination with herbs, essences, flowers, and trees with your host, Herbal Marie. Let's start the day off pulling some oracle cards and getting a few messages. We can shoot the shiitake in a spiritual way-ish. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post a pic of the cards at Herb Oracle. Thanks so much for joining me. Here we go. Okay, so 24 hours is too long of a time frame to go without talking to you because too much can change in my life within that rotation. (laughs) Good morning. Um, Yeah, for real, like just when you think everything is the way it's going, things can change like that. So if things are in the in your life that are not exactly like you're like, I just don't even know. Just I'm telling you what the energy this week. I mean, we can credit the full moon, we can credit the partial lunar eclipse, we can credit whatever you want to credit, but things are able to change this week. So I got a little update on my crazy life. And then we're gonna do a new law today. We're doing the we're doing 105 laws of the universe or universal laws and we are on number 21 today. So this is the 45th episode of Herb Oracle and we are on the 21st law and uh yeah, so but first of all, I know you're I know some people are just tuning in to get the update on my life. <laughs> In my crazy life and um, maybe it's gonna get less crazy I'm just saying maybe it's gonna get less crazy so I mentioned to you that with this full moon energy I woke up the next day and the feeling that was just yesterday right feeling so much better right like I just feel so much better I let go of this sadness right like my husband had left right? Like he gone, like I felt sad. Um, but you know, at the same time, I'm just okay and open still like to whatever, you know, cause there's I, like, I don't know what he's doing. If he just needs a break, if he's coming back, you know, really just feeling open. And, you know, as I'm reading, you know, this week I'm reading my books that, um, were channeled through Tina Louise Spalding. And it's all about love. And it's all about, um, the frequency of love, you know, and, and we're either in it or we're not with everything we do in life. We're either, it's either an act of love or a lack of love. So every conversation, every interaction, every decision, is it an act of love or is there a lack of love? And yeah, it's just a simple home remedy. Hello. Um, for everything in our life to do all things from love because you are love and um, so anyways I just was coming at life with this and you know this perspective and uh, really thinking a lot about how you know if a more than a week passes you know and um, my husband's okay with not being here and I'm okay with him not being here like then it's done, right? Like 13 years with somebody, like it's just done. For what reason? We're not even fighting, (laughs) do you know? It just just fizzled out for no good reason. I mean, there's issues and stuff that that, that are on the table, but like, it's not like an eruptive, like, I never wanna see you again. It's, It's, I've been telling you, it's been so sad, right? It's been so sad. So anyways, I just thought, you know what, <clears throat> this just <clears throat> this just doesn't feel right, just kind of like letting it go, like, <laughs> so every, first of all, side note, like, I'm thinking like 20 years from now in the future, how will this look when I look back on it? But side note, everybody on Facebook right now is falling into the face app, the face app trap, and they're uploading a picture of themselves and it's like showing them what they might look like when they're old old 
And um, I've just been laughing because I haven't seen most of these people for over 20 years. Like I just got on Facebook and I'm connecting like with a bunch of people that, you know, from high school and they've already been looking old to me. Like, cause I haven't seen him in 20 years. Like I'm like, oh my God, is that really Josh? Like, oh, he looks really old. And it's like, so I've already been having the face app experience with everybody. I mean, like just trying to comprehend that everyone's 20 years older. <laughs> so <laughs> to put another 20 or 30 years on their face, it's like so funny to me. Like I was like, I was already thinking you looked old. <laughs> so anyways, all right, but back to him, back to me. <laughs> when, you know, with my relationship and, you know, my marriage, thinking like, all right, in 15, 10, 15, 20 years, two years, whatever. But really like the long term, when I look back with that perspective and I try to explain like why that didn't work out, am I going to think like, well, I tried, I did try. Or am I going to think, ah, I didn't even really hardly try. Well, I was kind of come to the conclusion that like, yeah, like, this probably could be so easily patched up and and maybe even, you know, given a little fertilizer and, you know, remedied and healed. Like, do we really just want to, like, leave this, um, I don't want to say karma, but, like, yeah, energy. Like, do we really just want to, like, leave this kind of, like, unfinished kind of uh, energy, like, in the air? Or do we want to try again? So we had like a two hour phone conversation with probably killed each of our spirits because we hate talking on the phone. <laughs> and like it was exhausting, but it was so needed. And um, yeah, we really just hashed some things out and, you know, said out loud, like, you know, we could, we could try this again. And, um, you know, and it's like, he's not hot. Like if, if your partner leaves and they're happy, having a good time, living life, and you're like, you could be happy for them and, or, or justify like, well, yeah, it's over for them, but he's miserable, <laughs> you know, and um, he's not enjoying being away from us. And it's like, well, why? Why did you even go? Well, he's definitely upset about a few things, but they could all be like remedied. And a lot of them, like, it's like, okay, well, now that you're expressing how you feel like it's not a problem to change this or that you know little things little things can feel like big things though so anyways that's my news i've been like like living with someone that we were not communicating we were not interacting like we're married but we certainly weren't acting like husband and wife you know for a long time and then like it seems like months and yeah, just like that, it's like a different perspective comes in. Like seriously, you guys, like c couldn't you just try to love? Like it really wouldn't be too hard. And it all starts with communicating love. So we'll see, right? Isn't that like the, the story of my life? Sadie Marie Cherico Martin on my tombstone, underneath it just says, we'll see. <laughs> like that's why I have to live my life by the law of divine flow which is what we did yesterday and what was that living in the moment centering ourselves in love being in service to others and when we're in that moment by moment flow of the higher self and the God self we can we can create actions of love how by being in a state of allowingness right? When we're in that state of allowingness, we do and consider what is best for all. We say the right things at the right time. We're in alignment. We're in alignment with our higher self. We can let go of old patterns. You are not chained to your old patterns. You can let them go anytime you are ready to. And the more we do this, the more we are able to strengthen our connection to our God self to our higher self, open up those channels to the higher realm. The law of divine flow really allows a lot to flow in your life. So that's what we did yesterday. Um, 
And of course, yesterday I had that moment where I was like, oh my God, flow is in flowers. You know, I have that like, <laughs> I had that, I had that moment. So today we're gonna pull more flower cards that we didn't get to yesterday. We're gonna do the magic of flowers today. But first we're gonna do law 21, the law of divine love and oneness. So when I start living my life from a place of divine love and oneness, how could I not love my husband that I've been with for 13 years? Like it just was feeling so not right to me. Like, you know, like we're purposely not saying I love you at the end of our phone calls. We're purposely withholding hugs for what? Like that's stupid. Um, and that's what I kind of was like telling myself, like, like if you met someone on the street, me, and I had a great conversation with them, like I would hug them. But even if I didn't know them, like at the end of the conversation, like that was amazing. Thank you for, for reminding me of that, you know, so much love to you. Like I would not hesitate to say that to somebody. So it was like, why am I, why is my ego making me think that like, I have to completely cut it off with this person. So over the past, <clears throat> um, you know, the past week since he said he needed to step away and take a break, I've just been sending him compassion and love and trying to understand how he feels and trying to see things from his perspective. And yeah, it really shifted, <clears throat> no shift, <laughs> no shit. It really shifted a lot within me. So yeah, the divine love and oneness. Okay, and here's the kicker. Um, right before we were, we started our very long conversation, um, I had just read this sentence in my book and I wish it was with me, but it would basically, um, the book's upstairs, but it basically said that love is eternal and love never dies. So if you've loved somebody like in the afterlife, which is just more life, more life, more life, eternal life. In the eternal life, um, yeah, we shouldn't call it afterlife. We should call it in the eternal life because this life is temporary, but you know, you are an eternal being. And it was saying that love is forever. So if you're connected with somebody and you love them on earth, you will be connected to them forever. And like the love will always exist. And it just, like, so right before he called me, like, it was, I was already, like, it was the last little crawbar, crowbar, crawbar, crowbar, Sadie. It was the last crowbar that, like, pried open that last little corner of my heart. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And I thought to myself, we're always going to be connected. And then, like, this little bit of, like, like no regrets in life, but this little twinge of it was like, and have you loved him to your fullest ability? Because being like a perfectionist, it does, it was killing me that like, like I don't like any of my projects to fail, let alone my 13 year marriage, you know? <laughs> and it's like, well, did you try hard enough? Like, like, could you love better? Could you love more? Could you be more compassionate? Could you be more thoughtful? Could you be more affectionate? And it was just like, oh my God, yes, I could, I could have been, I could be like, like I would love like another go at this one more, right? 13th time is a charm. <laughs> like why not try one more? So then when we're older, there's no regrets. And, you know, especially think about it. If you're going to be connected to everyone that, you know, and for eternally forever, like, doesn't that kind of, like, change the way you want to interact with people? Like, you cannot get, you cannot shake anybody. I have learned this lesson again and again and again. The people that you're supposed to be connected with, you can't shake those mother truckers off. Like, literally. They just keep finding you. Back to Facebook. People that I thought I shook off 25 years ago, <laughs> they found me they found me again, they back. And it's like, okay, I just, I'm rubbing my chin. All right, I apparently have some more work to do with these people or, you know, we got a soul contract. It's just, you cannot shake people off. So you might as well do it right. You might as well love them right. 
and you might as well just tap into that divine love and oneness now because that is what is in the eternal life. All right, so you ready to hear this? <laughs> Number 21, the law of divine love and oneness. This law concerns the ability of an entity to complete a round of reincarnation, develop such soul growth that the vibrational speed of the being qualifies him or her to merge with God. We then become a soul extension of God, and among our choices, many, we have the ability to live in the liquid light which flows in and from God, or reincarnate as an avatar in third dimensional existence with the purpose of aiding mankind. Dang, that, got, that went a little bit deeper than I thought it was going to. <laughs> I was just, I thought when I read the div the law of divine love and oneness, we were all gonna, just going to do a group hug. <laughs> all right, so big wow. The, this law concerns the ability of an entity to complete a round of reincarnation and develop such a soul growth that the vibrational speed of the being qualifies them to merge with God. So yeah, that's what I'm always talking about, like do my work here so I can go back home, <laughs> so I can go back to God. But um, the thing is, once you get there, it's like you love it, and then it's like, yeah, but do you want to go? Do you want to go aid mankind again? Do you want to go help out? And then you come back with a new avatar and help out again. So um, <laughs> we'll see. Hashtag we'll see. <laughs> We've, so the, we, the law of divine love is oneness of, is, about, is about completing your reincarnation, um, doing so much soul growth that it increases your vibrational speed, which makes me dizzy to think about. Maybe I'm laughing too much. And then we become a soul extension of God. And we, have, we can either have the ability to live in the liquid light, which flows in and from God. We are one with God again. Or we can reincarnate into this dimension. Or I'm assuming another dimension. Like, hello. <laughs> so that is the law of divine love and oneness. But yeah, while we're here, while we're here right now, right here, right now, right here, right now, our purpose is to aid mankind. And that does raise your frequency. And connecting with everyone like we are one. Like when you start to go to the grocery store and see that everyone in there is part of the collective. We are all connected. We are all one. You get a whole different experience of going to the grocery store. When you can do that in your life and see everybody, you know, in oneness. In oneness. Start to say that to yourself. See how it changes you. In oneness, I wish you the best. In oneness, I send so much love to you. In oneness, I honor our connection. I mean, the brain sometimes doesn't know what to do with it, you know? But the heart does. But the heart does for sure. So, I mean, it's like logically, sometimes in life, our brain is like, what the F? are you thinking right like why are you why are you being nice to this person but the heart is like <laughs> i don't need to think bitch that's what the heart says <laughs> back off i know what i'm doing um i have the ability to love 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 greater than you'll ever imagine so why don't you just step back and let me do my job So love, 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 love. What are you doing today? I'm gonna love. What do you <laughs> what do you need to think about today? Love. What are you gonna say? What are you gonna talk about today? Love. 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 You are here to love your love. That's why when you're not loving, it feels so terrible. So 
love. That's going to be my new focus here um, in my world. Love, love, love. And like, you know, what a 360, because I had been bracing myself for a lack of love. I had been preparing myself um, to, you know, restrict love from my husband and go through this separation and go through this, you know, a divorce. And it was just like, so you know what it's been like. So let's talk about now. Like now, um, I, I do want to try, like sincerely try again. So I have to deliberately shift a few things, um, you know, that we kind of, um, like for instance, I take a break and then I can't, I come back, I can't talk. <laughs> um, we have not been sleeping together like in the same bed for a few months because he's been sleeping in his office. And um, so that is going to change. And he's coming back this Saturday. So um, because he he needs to help his mom today. And um, tomorrow the girls and him were going to have this, they were going to camp out, sleep out there. And so, yeah, we're still, we're still finishing out the week plans. But then Saturday he's coming home and um so i've just been kind of like okay so i'm going to mentally prepare for this not too not too terribly cuz like even though he left and he said he was gone i didn't change a thing here like part of me was like i know you i know you coming back you know <laughs> the the mary magdalene in me was like he'll be back <laughs> but um <clears throat> so but I did, you know, like last night, like I did change around the bedroom, you know, like, cause I had taken over the space. Like I was like, oh, you don't want to be in bed with me. Then I get the whole thing and I'm rearranging the, the, the books and I'm, you know, so I cleared out space for him. I brought back his, um, his, uh, cushion and pillow and like, I'm like, he's, I'm solidifying it into my reality. Like he's coming back. And I'm going to be as loving as I can be. Because you guys know, like, um, from my interview with Time in the Studio, the plant that I emotionally relate to strongly is stinging nettle. So, you know, I have to take responsibility that, like, a lot of times I don't freely give the love and the affection. Even though I want it, like, I'm stinging nettle. Do you know? <laughs> I'm not always cuddly. And, um, so yeah, it's like, well, what if you, what if you tried a little bit more, you know what I mean? Like, what if you were more sweet, more compassionate, especially now that like, I'm on the fourth book. No, wait, I have two more books of Tina Luis's six book series, I guess, if you want to look at it as a series. And it has literally changed me. Like it has changed me so much. It's like, I don't even feel like I'm the same person that I was yesterday or, or yeah, last week, let alone three months ago, let alone a year ago. And I mean, that's the thing about being married or with someone for so long. You grow up together, you change. Um, at di we've been like a hundred different people in our relationship, which means we could always change into something different or so it's just like hey let's do let's go one more time but yeah so today I am changing a few things um in the house like you know like um gonna rearrange a little bit because anytime anything in my life changes I always like there to be like um an, an outward change too and the cot that he's been sleeping on like I'm not it's it's out of his office like I'm wifing it up and being like, this is not belonging here. <laughs> so if you're coming back, don't even look at this thing. You know, like if you're coming back, you're in bed with me. Which, as you know, if you've listened to any of my <laughs> last months, when I was like, I need a lover now. Like, I am more than happy to have him back in bed. Alright, are we ready to pull a card on that note? Are we ready for some magic of flowers? Um, looking forward in our life towards having more love. Isn't that a great intention? Whether you're thinking about your job, your projects, 
your friendships, your family, your anything. I mean, adding more love into it is not going to hurt. It's not going to hurt your reality um, it's because you are love. So you literally can't get enough of it in your life. And that's like another cool thing that um, the, these books from Tina Louise Spalding were saying like, love doesn't just have to be like an intimate sexual relationship. Like you can be loving in everything you do. Like anything you're doing, you can be loving. Any conversation you're having, it can be loving. Like you can be in love with that moment. You can be putting out love, receiving love, like everything you do. Love, 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 love. Think about it. Feel about it. It's a good idea. All right, so I'm coming at my life today. Thank God with a more positive um, perspective, looking for love. You know, because before, it's so easy. It's so easy to start looking for things that you don't like and are not working and don't appreciate and it's just screwed up. Like, it's just such a whole different mindset to start looking for love and looking for things that, that can be loved up even more. Like, how can I love up this situation more? Like. Oh, hello, good morning. Your purpose in life is to love. Your job today is to put as much frequency of love into everything that you can. Frequency of kindness, frequency of caring. Um, it's an energy. Love is an energy. How can you direct it, use it, share it, give it, receive it, feel it today? Let it be your job. Okay, here we go. <laughs> So here we go. Let's get a little message. We're thinking about love today. Um, so let's just get a magic of flower. We're going to do top, the one that's peeking out to the side, and bottom. All right, so three cards here. <laughs> As I'm like trying to hold the deck so it doesn't turn into more. All right, three cards um, to start off with. Let's see what we got. I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of nervous though. And I was also just thinking like, you know, <clears throat> when I said love is your job, my mind was like, and yeah, maybe you can get a little job in the evening because um, that might just help out this situation here at home too. If I go out and um, bring a little paycheck home, you know, because like money is such a stress in relationships. And I mean, now that the kids are older, I could totally help out more with that, I guess. I guess. No, I will. <laughs> we'll see. All right. So the first one we're getting is lilac. We have lilac and, and she is in this... Um, Kind of like a night nightgown, evening gown, sparkly dress. And um, she's under a starry filled sky. She has her eyes closed. She has her third eye star lit open too. And she's got all the lilac behind her. So this is a message for us to trust our intuition. Trust our intuition. If I'm only listening to my mind all the time, I'm just going to keep using my marriage as an example because I have nothing else going on right now <laughs> Like in my mind. It has consumed me. Um, it's like if I would just listen to like, like the programs that we have in our head, like, well, he left so he doesn't get another chance or, well, you told him to go so you have to, which I never did tell him to go. I told him to stay. But it's like, well, you let him go. So now I ha that's your bed. You made your bed, sleep in it, right? That is mind shit. That is your thinking center. Where is your intuition? It's in a different part of your, of your brain, right? It's a different thing altogether. So it's like if your intuition is saying, this doesn't really feel right. This feels sad. Like I don't, this just doesn't, this is in not in alignment with love. Um, and you just have a feeling, your intuition, you need to trust that. 
Like, is this a good idea or not? How does that feel, you know? So lilacs coming in with trust your intuition. And I like that right now as I look out the window, I can just look over to the right and see the lilac bush. So no blooms on that thing. But next year, I'm excited because we got two blooms on it this year. So next year, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. All right, our middle card is Wisteria. So, so far these are like purple vibed, flowy, soft cards. Wisteria is a mermaid in the ocean. She's got all these bubbles in her tail. It's all about softening the edges, right? Which is kind of what I was talking about, like putting down my stinging nettle essence and picking up something a little softer, right? Activating within me through the essence of love, something much more huggable, right? Um, something much more lovable, something much more going with the flow, going easy about it. So we've got listen to your intuition and soften the edges. So isn't that too beautiful? Absolutely beautiful. Um, pieces of advice when we're going at a situation with a newfound essence of love. You know, always still listen to your intuition, trust your guidance, and yeah, soften the edges. Do you need to be so hard and harsh and judgmental and um, reserved? Do you need to be reserved or can you really just go with the flow and be easy about things? Okay, our third card is Bleeding Heart. So, yeah, these heart wounds. These heart wounds. It's time to heal the heart. It's time to heal the heart. It's, it's time to heal the wounds that maybe you helped inflict on another person's heart. So, yeah, we've got these, 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 um, this lady who's under the bleeding heart and and um she almost looks she, she's in distress but her hands on her heart and all this lights coming open and i always um tell my friend trinity we always say to each other a broken heart is an open heart right cuz if you've ever had your heart broken you know how painful it is but a broken heart is an open heart. Like think, look, feel how much love is like coming in and out of it, you know? And it's like, you think you don't want to love more, but actually like when you get your heart broken, you don't think that you want to love again, but actually the best thing for you is to love even more. Ego says, I never want to love again. That was awful. But actually the remedy is to increase your love quotient so much more than it's ever been. That's what heals. That's what heals a broken heart. That's what does heart healing. Not restricting, not moderating, not not um, you know really heart. Not not regulating what comes in and out of your heart. You might as well just let everything come in and out through your heart space. Use your heart as a filter, right? Everything that comes in, take it in with love. Everything that you give out, give it out and infuse it with love. Love, 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 love. So yeah, it's time to heal the heart. It's time to heal the heart. And how do you do that? By loving more. How do you love more? Soften up, go with the flow. How do you know which way to go? Use your intuition. So these are beautiful flowers for us today. We're gonna pull a few more. As we just close our eyes and just breathe in some energy of love. We're gonna do top and bottom. So now we kind of have like a pyramid thing. We're, we are rising up our cards. We want to love more. How much more can we love today? How much more can we love today? How much can we appreciate today? How much can we just look for the good in everything today? All right, our next card is Bougainvillea. Bougainvillea, we have this beautiful woman. These are all goddesses. We have this beautiful woman in the sea 
in this beautiful colored sea. Her arms are open out to the sides. She is in receiving mode. She is letting herself be purified by the water and the sunlight and the flowers around her. So she's opening herself to be purified. She's opening herself to release old patterns, any type of lower density energy. She's allowing that to leave. She's allowing the sun and the sun codes and the light codes and the catalyst of the water to infuse her with this new energy. Ego mind says, oh, but I don't know how to love. I've never done that. I've never loved like that. Like, I just don't even know if I can. Heart says, shut the love up. <laughs> Heart says, open up and love and love and let the energy do its work. Like, if you would just quit repeating the negative mantras in your head and allow the energy to do its job, which is to purify you, your vibration will rise, your frequency will rise, you will, let, you will become a new human. So Bougainvillea is saying purify, allow yourself to be purified. Allow yourself to open up to the energies coming in. Allow yourself to be healed. Allow yourself to be filled with more compassion. Allow yourself to be guided by the wisdom of your heart. Okay, so thank you for that. And I just did a meditation yesterday. Um, it was er from Era of Peace. She's at older beautiful woman that does hello beautiful hearts like I don't know she's kind of got a scratchy but beautiful voice and um she did an amazing healing meditation where we're just bringing in all this energy and allowing all systems to be restored and allowing this beautiful love to come into our body so um yeah I think i I think I put it out on um, my old Twitter account, which is All Natural Me. So it's actually on the top of my page right now if you want to check it out. Um, but yeah, it was really good. All right. So, but you can just say right now, like, I, I'm going to let in the new energy of love into my body, into my mind, into my heart, and let yourself be purified. And, you know, on the other hand, you do have to take the conscious effort to discipline yourself to do your own purification of your mind. That's why I'm doing the Course in Miracles. That's why I take time to focus on what I appreciate. I need to get back to writing it down in my gratitude journal, but first and foremost, it's important for me just to do it in my head. Always be looking um, for things to appreciate and when these negative patterns come up that want to pull the rug out from under us um, want to pull the rug out from love right ego doesn't really want you to love you have to be aware of when that stuff comes up and do your inner work to purify your mind and let's see what the next card is <clears throat> Ooh. Hydrangea. Now, Hydrangea is sitting there like Kuan Yin, and we um, have definitely seen her before. She is about restructuring the pattern. So, very interesting that we get a message from Bougainvillea to purify, and then Hydrangea comes in to say yes, and let's restructure that pattern. Any pattern that you've had in your life, in your relationships, like even though we've had the pattern, of um, you know, uh, not being so loving, of being kind of unaffectionate, of being you know judgmental. We can change that pattern. We can restructure the pattern. Um, any patterns that you have in your mind of judgment, of you know being close-minded, guarded protecting yourself all the time even when you don't need to 
right? You're just afraid to love. You can restructure that pattern. Anything in your life that is not serving you, that is not in your highest good and the highest good of all, all it is is a pattern. Everything, that's all anything is, is patterns. Um, so once you start to identify them and recognize them, you can restructure them. You allowed the pattern, you built the pattern, and you can restructure the pattern. Like everything. You're basically just a computer. You're just a bunch of programs. And some of them you put in there, some of them you just, they just came with it, right? Some of them are viruses. And you can clean out. You can do a complete reset. So yeah, that's that's what the Course in Miracles is helping me do. It's such, it's such a weird way it's helping me. I would never have guessed it would have worked, um, especially with me, because I had the pattern that I was resentful like of the church, of using any words like God, and I just really dismissed Jesus. And, and so <clears throat> I was like, well, I don't think this is probably going to work, but we'll see. <laughs> But we'll see, and it really has served me. Um, it's serving me, and um, because it's and it, the really the way it's serving me is because I'm doing it with Tina Louise Spalding, and it's that channeling that she's doing at the end of the lesson um, that's making me bringing it into you know it's just like it's just it's just updating the whole thing for me, and um, yeah, all these patterns. That's all you've got going on in your mind. So restructure them. All right, let's get one more card since I'm kind of rambly now. I'm going to put the deck down. I'm going to cut it. Wow, that's not where I wanted. That's not where I thought it would cut. Like I always think it's going to be a middle of the deck cut. This was real close to the bottom, but it was certain. It was certain. And it is this beautiful flower that looks like a rose, but it's camellia. I think that's how you say it anyways. C A M. E L L I A Camellia. Camellia? It's freaking gorgeous, whatever it is. Um, but here we have a beautiful goddess. She's sort of wearing this old, old medieval type of dress, but it's in this turquoise, perfect blue. <laughs> I love that color. And there's a lot of it today trickling down through our cards. And she has her hand on her heart, one hand on her heart, and um, one hand out with the camellia flower with um it's it's suspended in sacred geometry it's suspended in metatron's cube that's what it's in and um she's holding it out like it's this powerful thing and it is this is a message to activate this is a message for you to put your hand on your heart right now and you to put your other hand out to receive the love of the universe and to activate your heart right now. That's what this card is bringing forth for us today. A heart activation. It does not matter what you have done or where you have been or how you perceive yourself to be. You are now being offered an activation to open up your heart space to bring in energies that are new to you, to bring in more love than you have ever known. So join me right now by putting your hand, if you haven't already, on your chest, on your heart space, on your heart chakra, and your other hand is outward. And just allow God's source all that is to flow divine golden light into your hand. Feel it coming into your hand and moving through your arm. Straight up through your arm and into, probably gonna tickle your side a little bit, and into your chest, into your, I can almost feel hotness like south of my armpit <laughs> like it's drilling beautifully drilling into the side of me tickling me a little bit allowing this energy to come in 
allowing it to fill up your chest, fill up your whole cavity of your chest and, and almost feel it circling. Might even circle a little bit as you're sitting. Allow that energy to circle in around your heart chakra. Allow it to open, activate, and fill up with love. This energy has come in to heal you, to open you, to inspire you, to give out love, to give and receive love in everything that you do, in everything that you think, in everything that you say, in everything that you be. Be love. Accept this love activation now into your heart fully. And so it is. Wow, you guys. Wow, what a beautiful assembly of this just incredible flower entourage um, that we have. So let's get right into the gratitude roll. Love, 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 love. Thank you so much, Lilac, for coming in today to remind us to listen to our intuition, to listen to our heart, to get into our feeling center. That is what we want to be guided with. Ego, you're done. Um, we are now following the guidance of our wisdom and of our heart. Thank you, Wisteria, for coming in with your mermaid essence, your beautiful little bubbles, to remind us to soften the edges and go with the flow. And you don't need to be such a hard ass in your life. You don't need to be rough and tough anymore. You don't need to be stinging nettles all the time. Um, put that stinging nettle in a blender and soften it up. <laughs> It's time to nourish the heart. Thank you, Bleeding Heart, um, for coming in to just remind us to do our healing work, to allow more and more and more and more and more love to come into us. That is what is going to heal. That is what is going to repair. That is what is going to renew us. Bougainvillea coming in with a message of purification. Allow the energies to purify your mind. Allow yourself to be cleared out of this residual negativity that you have held on to for too long. It's time to let it go. Just let it go, let it go. Get into some water, soak your feet today and let it go. Water is so healing. Drink it, love it, be in it. Let it work its magic for your vessel. Hydrangea, bam power of energy and of Kuan Yin. I feel it so much. She is sitting there activating, restructuring the pattern, allowing a new pattern to come forth. Her hand is up. There is a rainbow light coming up. You'll be able to see a picture of it at Herb Oracle on Instagram. She is putting out a new pattern. You don't have to settle. You don't have to keep repeating. You can restructure the pattern and put that out there. And finally, thank you, Camellia, for giving us an incredible heart activation today. We can be activated on many levels, but first and foremost, we need to open <clears throat> our hearts. Don't let yourself close up. Don't let yourself shut down. Let the heart activation come into you and revitalize you. Let the heart activation remind you into a state of remembrance that you are love. So on that note, love, 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 love. You are love. Thank you.